you'll draw back a nub. Have you ever said that to an overly aggressive waiter who reached for your plate before you were finished? I have on occasion, though of course I was joking, a little. Usually the thread is empty and is only a joke, though the message is clear. Pull your hand back and don't touch my plate. I'm not finished. Sometimes the phrase is used more seriously if one person is being aggressively or inappropriately touched by another. That message is more of a threat than a joke and the message is clear. Get your hand off me. To be honest, I came up a bit short when searching for the origin of the phrase. Pardon the pun. Quite frankly, the idea is quite ancient and probably exists in some form in every culture. But surprise, surprise, in the Bible, there's an ancient example of a man reaching out and drawing back a nub. Jeroboam, the first king of the northern kingdom of Israel. Jeroboam was given 10 tribes of Israel and promised an everlasting throne, a dynasty. All he had to do was hear and trust God. But out of fear and distrust, he disobeyed God and set up idol worship. Because of his disobedience, the faithful priests had to leave their ancient homes and move to Jerusalem. See recent Morning Minutes in the Bible videos for more details. Because of his disobedience, God sent a prophet to display God's power and condemnation of Jeroboam. When God's prophet arrived in Bethel to condemn the idolatrous worship, he walked in on Jeroboam in the middle of making an offering. He immediately proclaimed judgment on the physical altar in the form of a son of David, naming Josiah 300 years in advance, burning the bones of the priest on it, thereby defiling it. He also stated the altar would split in two as proof God was the source of his message. The words offended the king who stretched out his hand, commanding his men to seize the prophet. In mid-order, his hand shriveled up. He drew back a nub. Oh, and the altar split open just as the prophet said. The king begged God, not the idol he was worshiping, for mercy. And when the prophet prayed on his behalf, Jehovah God restored his arm. 1 Kings 13 verses 1 through 6. Despite all that, the idol worship continued and became known as the sin of Jeroboam from then on. What is the sin of James McClenney? What is your sin? Not the occasional slip up that happens to us all, but the one we cannot seem to overcome, no matter how often we pray and promise to leave it behind. If anything plagues the Lord's church today, I believe it's our failure to recognize that sin in our lives, in our own lives. In our pride, we tell ourselves it's not a problem, but like Jeroboam, knowing it's wrong, we keep going back anyway. Why do we keep rebelling against God knowing we'll draw back a nub? Why not recognize it and repent and break the cycle? Thank you for watching Morning Minutes in the Bible. Until next time, this is James McClendon hoping you have a great day.